talk a little bit about China. Your book you wrote, I think, in 1994 um, on China. You've had a lot of experience in China. Um, and where do you think we are today in China? Are things improving? Are you bullish about the future of China? Um, I think that I'm, uh, on the whole, in the long run, I'm mm. pretty reasonably bullish about uh, China, but with a couple of important caveats. One is I think that the economic model is essentially going to have to change. The growth in the future will increasingly come mm -hmm. from, from new sources of demand. Um, and that's going to be a real challenge for the country. Uh, and the aging of the population is also another huge uh, economic challenge. So they have some real economic challenges. Growth will, I think, uh, moderate. Um, and then they have a hump to get over politically. Um, we keep waiting. You know, when Hu Jintao became the leader, we thought, okay, maybe he is going to be the leader who's going to modernize politi who's politically as well as economically. Well, no, he wasn't. Things were frozen. Then we thought, okay, Xi Jinping, you know, thank God he's here finally, and he's going to uh, modernize politically. And, in fact, he's tightened things uh, mm -hmm. politically. Um, and, um, you know, that when country, one of the things we've seen over and over, and I, I covered the whole series of, of uh, Asian countries as they got richer, more exposed to the world, larger middle class, more educated, then it creates aspirations mm -hmm. uh, for participation. And those exist in China, too. At some point, they will have to uh, be dealt with. Um, I hope that when that comes, then the regime won't respond the way it did in June 4th, 1989. Mm -hmm. So I'm this balance about, uh, and we, we hear this debate in the Middle East today, between stability and freedom. Do you buy into that, uh, that this is a useful debate or governance um, challenge? You know, I mean, I, I think that it is true that uh, it really matters when governments mm -hmm. um, lift standards of living, lift people out of poverty. And uh, indeed, the Chinese government has been very successful doing that. Ethiopia has done that very mm -hmm. well, and Rwanda, too, are good examples of countries that are uh, very repressive, lock up journalists, do some things that I hugely disapprove of, and yet uh, enable their populations to live better lives. And I think that it is worth acknowledging that progress. I do think that to make that sustainable, um, that one has to respond on the political side as well, and that civil society becomes a um, kind of a guarantee of that sustainability. Uh, uh, it tends to reduce corruption. Mm -hmm. So I think countries that, when leaders say, oh, you know, it, we're too, uh, we're not ready yet for um, civil society, for a free press, mm -hmm. um, then, um, you know, then look out. Sometimes it works, most of the time it doesn't.